Shift F5. Okay. Content aware. So yeah, okay. It's crazy. Let's do a uh, generative fill. Try that. Again, generative fill for the win. I can just crop this in and I'm done, right? All right, so last video we went over this shot right here and I showed you how to go in and remove the distractions, the soft boxes. It was a background cleanup, um, but I was going through and selecting, making these multiple selections like this and it occurred to me, <laughs> maybe we have a part two and I simplify this and maybe just make, you know, one selection around the subject, right? Just like that, right click, select inverse, choose shift F5, hit OK or enter. Uh, wait for the because the content aware fill which we determined was the better way to do it on a plain background It's just faster and more efficient and look at that in two seconds I've gone through and I've cleaned up the background so easy, right? So let's look at Some other backgrounds some other shots that I have with different backgrounds and see if this little method right here Which is one selection um, see how well that works in different shots. So let's go through them All right shot number one with Janice. So let's try this. This is going to be tough because I've got to kind of line this up, but let, let me just see what I can do here. I don't want to get this piece. And, you know, maybe I, I get as much of the background as I can in there. You know, maybe I should have gone to the edge more to here, right? Get as much of the background as I can in there because I really just want to, you know, fill in this side and this side. So right click, select inverse, and we'll do shift F5 and we'll see what it does. And I'm doing this on the background layer, really. Etiquette probably tells you you should do it on a new layer, but look at that. Plain background, that is just the way to go, right? It leaves a little bit, you know, to be desired here, but we could come in and kind of clean up these lines a little bit with a paintbrush maybe. So uh, let's do a, I've got a, a button for this, select subject, select inverse, because I do it so much, I created a button for it. Maybe that's another video, right? So just like that, I've got the background selected. She's not selected. I can use a paintbrush, come in here. Uh, we'll do soft brush, hardness 0%, flow 15%, and come in here. I'm using a pen and tablet. You could use a mouse for this, but uh, hold down the alter option and maybe sample this color right here. You tap while holding down alter option and then just kind of see that. I just kind of remove that line. It's a little tricky here. When you get to this light fall off, you want to be you know, a little bit more subtle, but that looks good right there. This is a natural shadow, provides depth. I'm going to leave it. So there was like a little line there. We got rid of that. So number one, done. I think, I don't think generative AI is going to do any better with that. So I'm just going to move on because we've already established in part one, which I'll link above, that uh, generative AI was not the method to use. Maybe the method to use here. Let's see. All right. So this one's a little trickier. Um, I, I want these shadows down here in the shot, but I don't necessarily want this shadow from the softbox. So I'm going to freehand this selection and use the lasso tool. And let's start. I'm really terrible at freehand too, by the way. But let's start here. And we'll kind of come all the way down here. And get all this. And this is going to be the tough part. I don't know if I got that very good, but that's going to be the part that maybe messes up. But uh, let's do select inverse and we'll do a shift F5. Hit OK and let's see what it does. And I could crop this. Yes, I know. But OK, so, you know, that got me a good way there. It's actually these kind of it's kind of cool looking. Um, I'd probably want to come back here. Whoops. Let me just use a box this time. Come back here and maybe... Just grab that and do another shift F5 and boom. Um, pretty good. We could use that same paint method and kind of fill these in. Um, this is a little weird right here, but not bad. I kind of like the texture of that. Um, and now let's do generative fill instead. And we're going to hit generate. Let's see what it does. I feel like this line is a little too close to her head and it might use her head as part of the sample and kind of mess it up, right? That's when you get something that close. Um, that's where it kind of gets confused sometimes. Wow. Okay. So 
this actually, you know, if you're looking for a more uniform background, this did a really good job. We could use that paint method that I showed you earlier. Um, select subject, select inverse. You know, we'll go back to the paintbrush, hold down the alter option to grab a sample. Maybe I want a sample because this will kind of, I like sort of like the shadow, but you know, that light fall off doesn't, that shadow, the shadow should be on this, the left side, right? Because most of the lights come in here, but uh, so maybe we just kind of, you know, fill the top in there, right? You can kind of fill them in like that and sort of just remove those parts that you don't really think work real well, right? So I'm just sampling as I go, right? I'm getting a color here and, and like that. And that kind of cleans it up, right? I might do a little bit more, but um, I'm going to give, you know, I'm going to give, it depends, it's all about uh, your opinion on this one. I'm going to give it maybe a tie on that one because I liked sort of the, the way the Shift F5, the content aware, I kind of had the spots. This one, I'll give it to the generative fill on this one, actually, because it just gave me a little bit more uniform background, less work to clean up, right? So generative fill on that one. So it, I think it's tied one to one. Let's go to this one. This one's going to be a mess. <laughs> I can already tell you. Well, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get a good selection here, but let's try it. So we'll go here. Nah, maybe we try it from the top. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get her all in here. Nah. So this is, this is what we deal with in small rooms, right? All right, we'll go up to here. This is a problem right here because I'm sampling all this here. Maybe I have to do it freehand. Ugh. All right. I do it freehand. All right. So we'll come here. That's pretty good. This could be a problem. Maybe I just use this little tool right here. Hold down the alter option and kind of let's tuck that in a little bit so we're not. I think that was pretty good. Right click, select inverse. Now shift F5. All right, let's try it again. Or not. Oh, there it goes. Whoa, okay. Pretty good. I could do a little cleanup right there, probably with a clone stamp tool. See, I can't use just the paintbrush because I got all this texture. But yeah, um, it didn't really get the bottom here. So that would be a little extra work. But I think, you know, you could use either the clone stamp tool or just the. Uh, what is this? I can never remember the name of this tool. The spot healing brush. It's like <laughs> I use it every day. I cannot remember the name of it. So yeah, it's doing some weird stuff. I'd probably have to use like a clone stamp tool, alter option, get a bullet right there. So you could clean that up. This is tedious down here, but you could do it, you know, with a clone stamp tool, come in here and just start cloning, you know, over here. And anyway, so pretty good. Let me go back to the original selection. Okay, where were we? Okay, so we have the outside selected here. The just this this part here is selected. Let's do um, generative fill. Just hit generate. I'm not even giving it any you know instructions. I'm just telling it pretty much to guess. Now this part is slower than the content aware. So that one did a pretty good job as well. I'm going to, I did better over here on this. And then, so less cleanup, I think. I'll have to get this right here um, and maybe clean up just a tiny bit. I give it to generative fill on this one. A little bit more complex background. It filled this in for me. So uh, generative fill for the win, it's two to one, right? Let's go to the next one. Probably not my favorite shot. I had another shot. Really, it was better than this one, but... A little bit of kind of crazy distorted shot, right? I think I was using a 12 millimeter lens here, um, but maybe, and and these wood floors are the bane of my existence when we do stuff like this, because they're so hard to to get right, you know, when you're filling in and, and doing stuff. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going to kind of start here. Plus I hate drop ceilings. You know, we'll come all the way over to here. Select inverse, shift F5, okay, content aware. So, yeah, okay, it's crazy. You know, I can crop, probably get it in pretty good here. Let's crop it if I wanted to. But I've got all this crazy stuff over here, right? And I'd have to do 
some coin stamping. And like I said, coin stamping this floor is a real pain, right? Let's do a uh, generative fill. Try that. This generative fill is up two to one now. A little bit more complex stuff going on here instead of a plain background like I did last video, right? Part one. Part uno. Again, generative fill for the win. I can just crop this in and I'm done, right? Um, three to one on generative fill. Right? I can just go here and boom. Okay, three to one, generative fill. So here's another one. This one, another complex one. So let's do content aware. Um, I don't want this little crazy stuff right here. This is one of those Mylar, uh, Mylar sheets that you put on the floor, right? So um, when you get it too close to this kind of paper roll line, you probably want to back off a little bit, right? Um, just like that. All right, let's do Shift F5, Content Aware. Let's let it think about it. So pretty good job. Some craziness on the edges here with the Content Aware. Let's do generative fill this time. Generative fill, generate. We don't want to give any instructions. And let's just see what it does. It takes a little bit longer, but you know, it, what is the generative fill is up three to one now. It's taking longer because it's hopefully going to give me a better result. And I would say it does give me a better result. Again, I can crop in and, you know, it's going to, and I'm good. I don't think I would have to like do anything you know on a plain background in the last video part one um the plain background the content aware one hands down with that like i said generative fill is just it's, it's too much of a tool um you know you got to use the tool in the right context is what i'm saying um the generative fill is more appropriate for complex backgrounds right so all right let's do this one this crop is probably just about perfect um, let's see if I can do the, marquee tool here. All right. Let's go up to about there and right click, select inverse. All right. So let's do shift F5, which is content aware. Okay. Good. Yeah. I don't think I'd have to do anything to this. I see maybe a little something in the corner, but. Um, content aware does a real good job on that one. So let's control Z, go back to where we were. Now let's do generative fill. Let's see what that does. So what do we have? Four to one generative fill winning and takes a little longer. I think waiting for it, but I feel like it's going to give me good things. All right. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say generative fill wins out because um, there was that one spot in the corner here, but it sort of emulates the blur here a little bit better too, I think, um, than what the uh, content aware did. So I I'm going to just by a hair, I'm going to give it to generative fill in this five to one. Okay. So let's go to this one. London, this was a fun shoot with her. So we'll do the marquee tool. We'll come down. See, I got the shadow here. I'm going to have to freehand it again. Ugh, I hate freehanding. All right. I'm so bad at it. All right. You know, not too bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought. All right. Select inverse. So we got all this stuff on the outside. Shift F5. Enter. Let's see what content aware does. Oh, wow. Okay. Crazy. Crazy. All right. Um, you know, maybe I could come out to the edges a little bit more. Maybe it would be better. I don't know. Let's try generative fill. Generate. Always takes a little bit longer. Seems like it's cruising through a little faster this time, though. Generative fill for the win. Yeah, there's some cleanup I can do. You know, um, I can use my little button over here. Select subject, select inverse. Um, come back to my paintbrush tool, um, get a sample of, say, that color right there, and just kind of, you know, do that little thing, right? And that fixes it in just a few seconds, you know. You can do a little cleanup. And there's other methods to clean up the background, but, I mean, how quick was that, right? And this was a plain background, but um, 
Content of War failed me in that case. So that's it. Um, we're back. This is the original one. So Content of War fills. I mean, uh, Generative Fill wins hands down, I would say. Um, generative Fill, a couple cases edged it out. They were close, but generative fill for the win on any 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 time you have more of say a little bit of a complex background, um, generative fill is going to get you every time. So, all right, uh, thanks for watching. Give it a like if you're still watching. I appreciate it. That really helps get the video circulated in the algorithm and all that stuff. So, I appreciate it if you can just give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're so inclined. Have a good one.